Hey everybody, welcome to On the Glide Slope. We are going to be flying one of our how to simulate videos today. Today we're going to talk about how to simulate a forward slip approach. I'll take off here. We're at Brandywine Airport, which is where I do my training in the real world. We're running photorealistic scenery just so I have some of the same visual markers that I do in the pattern when I am flying the real thing. And uh, we're running uh, active sky weather, although it looks like we don't have any clouds at the moment. And uh, we're going to take off and fly the pattern here, and I'll describe uh, what we're doing while we're at it. So we are in the Cessna A2A172. And our winds are a little crosswind from uh, the north. OK, so um, forward slip. Why would you do a forward slip? Well, normally in the pattern, especially on final, if you need to adjust altitude, if you're above the glide slope or below the glide slope, 55, we can rotate. You do so with little adjustments to power. Your nose and your pitch controls how fast you go. There's that crosswind. And your uh, throttle is how you would add or reduce power for elevation. We do a little noise abatement turn here in the real world. So basically, when you're on the glide slope, you're thinking, if I need to speed up a little bit, you nose down. If I need to slow down a little bit, you nose up. And if I need to. Um, go a little sink a little faster, I take a little power out, and if I need to sink a little less fast, I take a little power in. Um, you would do that because um, if you go nose down, you can speed up, and that can make complicated things happen in the pattern. So the question is, what happens if you fly into the pattern and you're much too high, and you are maybe 1,000 feet instead of 500 feet above where you want to be? And the answer there is a forward slip. So we're going to learn how to simulate a forward slip today. And basically, a forward slip is a cross-controlled condition or you would bank, here we are at 12 Thunder, we'll take, we'll make our turn onto crosswind, is where you would bank into the wind and then give opposite rudder. So in this case, we'll be landing with a crosswind coming from the right. So we will bank and move our airlines to the right and then give left rudder. This basically creates a situation where the airplane is much less, less aerodynamic and it starts to sink, but you can sink while keeping your airspeed the same. And that's the great value in doing this is that you um, can lose altitude without pointing the nose at the ground. Okay, we're at pattern altitude here, 1500. Trim the airplane, come out of the throttle a little bit. And I've got the airfield off to that side. Make our turn about here. So that's the game plan. We're going to come in and rather than killing our throttle, and descending, uh, starting to descend when we cross the beam of the numbers, we're just going to make our turn onto base at our pattern altitude of 1,500 feet, and then we're going to use a slip to lose altitude. Now, we've got a crosswind today, which will make it a little more complex. I just came from a flight lesson, so I know very well what the crosswind is like. Um, landing was no problem, but slipping into a stronger crosswind can be a little more complicated. Uh, I'm a little further outside the pattern than I would normally want to be, so we'll come in here just a little bit to the north. And we're stabilized. Okay, good. Okay, so we're coming up on the field, and we will uh, get ready to practice this. Um, why would you want to do a forward slip? Why would you be in that situation? Well, you may just really misjudge your turn from base to final, you might be trying to put it down in a field because you've had an engine out procedure and you need to get down fast, stick the landing. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that could happen. You could be coming in on an instrument approach and blow your minimums and be too high. Okay, so we are at the numbers. So rather than cutting the throttle, we're gonna just keep flying here at our general. We'll cut it a little bit, but we're not gonna descend. So we'll go in more of a slow flight condition, keep our altitude. Trim the airplane. First notch flaps. Okay. Make our turn on to base. About here. Still at 1,500 feet. Need a little more power here because we're at about 70 knots. Did 
Take a look at the field. Okay, and we're way high. We got two white on the Pappy. Okay, now we'll make our turn on to final. Next notch flaps. And here we are, 1,500 feet, and we're on final approach. There's the field. So we would obviously cut our throttle, put in our flaps. And now our wind's coming from this direction. So we'll get lined up. Now we'll give right aileron and left rudder. And that is how it's supposed to to look. It doesn't. You wouldn't think that you'd be able to fly the airplane sideways, but you can. And I'm like full right rudder. Take the throttle out. Get on our airspeed here, and we're sinking like a rock. We're right at 65 knots, which is right where about where we want to be. If I want a little more speed, I can nose down just a little bit. We're starting to get into where we want to be. Now we can get out of the rudder. And ready to put her down. So there we go. Try not to roll off the edge of the strip. So there we go. So that's a forward slip. So uh, pretty safe, actually. Not too dangerous to do. You got to be careful, though, when you're cross-controlled and you're slow. If you give it too much aileron or if you were to suddenly give right rudder, you would go into a spin very quickly if you were to have matched up aileron and rudder or if you were to um, uh, suddenly try to bank the airplane you know, hard the other direction, it could get ugly fast. So don't do those things. Uh, here we are past rail. We'll clean up and make our way back to uh, the virtual ramp. So there you go, that's a forward slip and how to simulate it. Again, aileron this way, and I wasn't gentle on the rudder. I had full rudder opposite direction, and that's something in the real world that I've had to learn and get used to. I'll, uh, when I practice slips every once in a while, when I was learning them for the first time, I'd feel the instructor really pound on the rudder, and I'd realize that I was being too gentle with it. So there you go. Hope that helps. Uh, you learn how to try that. Try it out in your own sim. Let them let me know how it works. And uh, I think we'll only do one more landing uh, tutorial after this, and it will probably be how to land the airplane uh, in an engine out situation. So there you go. Thanks again for watching On the Glide Slope. If you have any questions about the basement simulator, please go to www.onthegliedslope.net. I'd be happy to uh, answer them there in the and either in comments or questions, there's an email address there. There's also a resources tab that has a bunch of the stuff that are common questions that people have about the airplane and the sim and how it works. And uh, again, I'm writing a guide, which I should have out in the next week or two, hopefully, um, that will summarize a lot of the stuff I've learned along the way, which should help guys who are looking to build their own sim as well. So there we go. Thanks again for watching on the Glide Slope, and go out there and practice your forward slips.